right, in, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the bikepacking gear that I used on the Oregon coast just recently in the shakedown ride that I did there. And um, if you missed that video, I'll put a link uh, uh, at the end of the, this video and also in the description. Uh, but I'm going to talk about that bikepacking gear and um, it all worked well. Uh, uh, so I have no complaints about any of it, but um, I'm going to talk about that and I'm also going to uh, show you what I pack in those bags uh, for this trip. And um, there will also be uh, uh, links to these uh, items in the description if you want to find out more information about them. This CPAC is a Revelit Designs Terrapin system. It's a 14 liter bag. And uh, the bag itself with the holster weighs just a little over a pound, about 1.2 pounds. And uh, one thing that I really like about this is that uh, it's got these two uh, clips under here. And you just pop them off and then you can pull the bag right out. And you're ready to go unpack it and do whatever you want to do. You can just leave this on the bike. And then uh, once you get it all packed up again, you just uh, pull this back, slide it in. And then you can flip this back over the top and then snap them back into place. One thing I wanted to mention about this uh, bag, uh, this seat bag here, uh, it's really worked out great. but. Uh, I don't know if this is a case with all of these seat bags, and I suspect it is, but there's a certain amount of uh, wobble in them when you're riding along. This thing can wobble back and forth, but, uh, you know, I don't, when I'm riding, I don't notice it. I don't notice it at all. Uh, I don't know what it looks like, but I, you know, don't really care as long as it's uh, safe, and it appears to be. Um, when, when I first got on the bike with uh, all this gear on it, it felt uh, strange, but that's normal. And, uh, you know, within five miles or so, you know, it just, you just forget about that. And it's just, it just feels normal, natural. But uh, the way this goes on here is uh, this, uh, there's two, uh, two straps here that go on the seat rails. And they come back around underneath here, and so you can pull them up tight, so it will reduce that wag uh, when when you're riding. But uh, and then you've got a, another heavy-duty strap that goes right around the seat post here. And uh, another nice feature of this uh, dry bag that goes in it is this uh, air valve right here. So once you get it packed, you can uh, leave that open so you can squeeze all the air out of it and then tighten it up again and uh, you don't have a bunch of air taking up some volume in there. This bag here is a Roswheel Attack Series handlebar bag and uh, it comes with a, uh, a dry bag and uh, but I'm not using the dry bag that came with it because it was a little too narrow for me and needed one that it would allow me to pack a little more so I've got this uh, dry bag that I just had laying around. It's an old REI dry bag and it happened to fit in there. But it just attaches to the handlebars with these straps. And then you've got a couple of straps here. Just unclip them and the dry bag comes right out. That weighs a few ounces. It's almost nothing. Um, so the dry bag plus that, I don't know, maybe a pound and a half. I'm not sure. Uh, then on top of that goes this Rock Bros handlebar bag, and it's just a pouch. And it's about a five, it says five to six liter pouch. And it's got these straps on it here. And um, there's, there's two of these Velcro straps. So on the Roswheel bag, I put a couple of uh, zip ties 
around the roswheel strap and then I just feed these uh, these straps for the for the uh, rock bows bag right through there and this bag weighs about just about six ounces then I've got a roswheel top tube bag and this is just a little bag to hold you know it can hold your phone or you know a couple of, I got some uh, flat repair things in there and you know my multi-tool and a spare tube and that weighs next to nothing that's an Everest um, fanny pack that I ride with and keep a few things in there and then the last bag is this mammoth uh, frame bag triangle frame bag and it's got a side pouch here that I, I don't use because uh, what I put in it it just fills it up so much that there's really nothing much you could fit in there, uh, you know, other than paper or something that's really thin. It's got this uh, top zipper here and a flap that goes down over it. And then inside there I've got a like an extra pair of riding shorts and uh, this is a battery pack to power my camera. And then uh, it's got these straps that go around the tubes, Velcro straps. Uh, one problem I had with this one was these bottom straps were not long enough. And uh, I, I had to splice a couple of other straps onto them to make these longer. But this bag is also super lightweight. I, you know, it's maybe maybe a pound, probably less than that. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, I'll have links to these, all these items in uh, the description of the video. I'll show you my gear here. Uh, I've got a Thermarest sleeping pad here. Uh, just some tools, um, extra tube. That sort of thing. There's a. These are my uh, tent poles here. Um, the tent is here. There's a fly, rain fly here, and there's the tent there. And this is a big Agnes copper spur tent, one person. Uh, I've got a REI trekking uh, seat that. Uh, the uh, thermal rest goes inside of to make a little seat you can sit on. And there's a little pillow, inflatable pillow, a um, La Fuma sleeping bag. Um, got my uh, packable down jacket. Got a bag of uh, toiletries, a pair of Columbia convertible pants, um, rain jacket for writing. That's a shower's pass and uh, some clothes uh, and one extra set of writing clothes and then uh, just some uh, quick drying shirts, uh, lightweight shorts. There's an REI uh, quick dry towel. I wanted to elaborate a little bit on this shower's pass jacket. Uh, I got this uh, before I did the southern tier, uh, half of the southern tier in 2018 and um, I knew I was going to be hitting a lot of rain on that ride and I did. I, there were just some torrential downpours so I got this jacket before I went and uh, boy am I glad I did. Uh, this thing is great. It's, it's expensive. They're not cheap but um, it, it kept me dry and it's got really good venting um, in the sides here, it's got these pockets zip down and open up, allow the airflow to come through on both sides, one on each side. And then it's got, uh, you can unzip this a little bit if it's, uh, if you want to let the air come in, loosen up the cuffs a little bit, and it'll let the airflow come up your arms and go out those vents. And there's also a, uh, a vent in the upper back part up here this part is uh, there's a mesh here and uh, that does not you cannot close that one but when with this down 
Um, it, you know, there's no rain, no water gets in there at all. And it's got reflective striping on it. There are two uh, kind of minor downsides to it. Uh, one is the zipper on this one. I mean, the zipper works great once you get it started, but getting it started, it's, uh, it's really, it's kind of tough. You really have to make sure it's seated all the way in there before it will pull up. But once, you, once it starts going, it's fine. And uh, the other thing is that it's got the long tail in the back. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have fenders on your rear wheel and it's kicking up uh, mud and water or whatever, it's not going to hit on your pants. It'll hit on the tail of the jacket instead. But uh, <clears throat> I noticed that when I'm writing, sometimes... I'll come up to a, a red light or whatever and, and I'll go to stop and get off the bike and the tail will be hooked around the back of the seat and I, I can't get up right away uh, until I back up and, and raise myself up over the seat. Uh, you can prevent that from happening by pulling in these drawstrings on the sides and they'll kind of lock into place and that pulls it in tighter so your the tail won't get uh, wrapped around under the seat, but uh, I just wanted to mention that. It's, it's not something that happens a lot, but when it does, it can be uh, kind of surprising, especially when you're just about coming to a stop. This is a freestanding tent, and uh, you've got the rain fly, the tent itself, and the stakes and the tent poles, and there's also a little splint in there to uh, repair a broken tent pole if that ever happens. And one thing I like about this is uh, this, uh, the tent pole system is uh, all connected by shock cording, so you can't ever lose a pole unless you lose a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so you just take the tent poles out of the bag, Open them all up, and then I uh, just start putting them together. You can slide in there like that. Get your tent, open it up, and put the mesh side up. And uh, these uh, these little clips are color coded. On the foot end, they're orange and that matches up with the fly. You lay it out so the foot end lines up with the foot end of the poles. So then you just start plugging the poles into the grommets on the ends. Start clipping these little clips around the poles. Then on this cross piece here you've got these little connectors here that just plug into the end of the pole just like that they just snap on. So now I'll put the rain fly on and the fly is uh, seam sealed from the factory so you don't have to worry about that and so the orange is on the foot side so the tent will go this way and then you just start clipping these corners and you, you're in the way mister that's clipped into place, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna put this weight under here just to show you what it would look like when it's staked out. And the tent door unzips this way and up. One thing I really like about this tent is the volume in there. Uh, it's I measured it in the the head room is about 41 inches in the middle. And of course it goes down on the end, so it comes down a little bit lower than that, down to about low 30s by, you get, by the time you get back to the end here. It's got this vent here, and it's got a little pole that holds it open when you want to, and it's got mesh up in there, and then it's got just a Velcro strap or end on it, and you can just undo that and uh, put that down and then this Velcro sticks there to close it You've off. You've got a lot of room in here. 
I'm five foot seven and I laid down in here and I had at least a foot to spare up at this end. Uh, which was really nice. At, uh, you know, I think a six foot or, you know, somebody even up to six five probably wouldn't have any problem sleeping in here. It's, uh, it's nice and wide back here. And it's got a little loop here where you could hang something from the ceiling. Three pockets there. One, two, three. It's even got a little opening here where you could bring in your, your cord down for your headphones and if you left your phone up in here. And the packed weight of this tent as I showed it with the stakes and the poles and the little bags that hold the stakes and the poles and that little splint, uh, the fly and the tent body all together is 2.2 pounds, uh, just a hair over that. So um, it's a pretty lightweight. If you saw anything in there that you thought might be interesting and you want more information about, check the links in the description. And if you don't see any information about that item in the description, ask me about it and I'll uh, give you some more information. All right, thanks for watching.